What's going on, gang? Welcome back to the channel. My name's CJ, and the NBA playoffs are finally here. And I'm back at it today with eight different player prop picks for today's NBA slate. We've got four fantastic games to look forward to. Uh, one of them kicks off here very soon. I'm going to try and record this, get it uploaded as quickly as possible, hopefully before 2 p.m. on the East Coast here so that you guys can take advantage of some of the picks that I mentioned that include that very first game of Miami at Milwaukee. Anyways, yesterday's video, we had nine picks, five of them hit. Let's see if we can improve today. I apologize for yesterday's Follower Friday pick. Uh, yeah, I was in on that pick as well. You know, it went one out of five and it wasn't very good. So I'll be the first to admit whenever... Uh, I or the community when we put out a pick that doesn't hit, you know, I'll be the first to own up to it. So hopefully we put that in the past. We move on from that. Today's a new day, new opportunities for us to make some money over on prize picks. Now, if you haven't heard, they're running a fantastic promo <clears throat> over on prize picks today. So if you do a deposit, whether you're a first time depositor or you're redepositing, they're going to match your deposit up to $250. 100%. So if you put in 250, they're going to give you 250. So you're going to have 500 bucks to play with. So fantastic promo. Definitely take advantage of that uh, if you have not yet. So without further ado, I want to get into this and get it going here. We got four games, as I mentioned before. Miami at Milwaukee tips off at 2 p.m. We've got a 227 point implied total with the Milwaukee Bucks as five and a half uh, point home favorites. So Great total there. Uh, spread is a little bit worrisome. I put it in the yellow zone. It's not like a major blowout risk or anything like that, but uh, it does look like Milwaukee's a pretty sizable favorite at home. The next game we have is the Dallas Mavericks at the Los Angeles Clippers with an implied total of 218 points, six point spread in that one. So uh, the total's not super high, uh, but in this case, I expect the Stars to get plenty of run here, and this game should stay close and competitive. Next game we have is probably my favorite one that I'm looking forward to anyway. Uh, Boston Celtics facing the Brooklyn Nets. We finally get to see the Brooklyn Nets at full strength with the likes of Kyrie Irving, James Harden's finally back, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin. I mean, they're just loaded with talent. Probably my favorite team on the East to uh, to be a, an eventual champion. Anyway, implied total of 232 points with Brooklyn as a big eight-point favorite at home against a Boston squad. That's not 100%. No Jalen Brown, unfortunately, for us basketball fans. So the very, very last game here, we've got a uh, good matchup here on the West Coast. We've got the Portland Trail Blazers at the Denver Nuggets. 226 and a half implied total here with Denver as just a one and a half point favorite at home. So this is going to be a very exciting game. Pretty high totals. Close spread here. So this one has the potential of even maybe hitting overtime. That would be sweet, especially if we're taking some overs in this particular matchup. So with those out of the way, now we can talk about the points, assists, rebounds, and three-point props that uh, stood out to me today. So let's start things off with a name that we you know, mentioned at the top of the show here, but we haven't talked about a whole lot on the channel, and that's Blake Griffin at 10.5 points versus the Boston Celtics. This game tips off at 8.10 p.m. here on the East Coast on prize picks. So Blake Griffin at 10.5 points seems a little bit too high, especially when you consider everybody being uh, back for the Brooklyn Nets and them being at full strength. So let's do a little search here, as we do in all of the videos, and we're going to look at Blake Griffin's point projection today over on number fire by the way number fire completely free site for you to go and check out any type of single stat or fantasy props that you want to look at so blake griffin's at 9.4 points obviously that's uh over one whole point less than his projected projection on prize picks of 10 and a half points so the under is looking like a good way to go here for blake griffin we're going to head over to nba.com again another free site we type in blake griffin's name Let's open up his player card. You can see that for the season, he has scored 11 points per game. But some of those games obviously were spent with the Detroit Pistons. Not all of them were with the Brooklyn Nets. So we're going to look at his last handful of games here, his five-game averages. And to do that, we click Stats, Traditional Splits. We go Advanced Filters, Change the Season Segment from All Games to the Last Five. And we click Run It. And you can see that in the last five games, he's played a little over 22 minutes per game. His scoring average, 11.4 points per game. But keep in mind that some of those games did not include James Harden. So let's hit reset on those filters. Let's change the opponent from all teams to just the Boston Celtics and see how Blake Griffin has fared against Boston this season. 
Now, he's appeared in three games against Boston, playing over 29 minutes in those games. His scoring average, 12.7 points per game in his three previous matchups. So, uh, there you have it for Blake Griffin. Now, last but not least, we're heading over to RotoWire. We're going to take a look at the various sports books, this point prop for Blake Griffin, and see if the over or the under is being favored over there. So, let's type in Blake Griffin's name here. We got him at... 10 and a half across the board, three different sports books to look at here. Minus 125 on the under, minus 118 on the under, and finally a strong little minus 128 on the under. So all three of the sports books agree that the under on Blake Griffin is the way to go. His season averages and his last five game averages and his previous matchups against the Boston Celtics indicate that he can potentially go over 10 and a half points. But again, a lot of moving parts, a lot of players in and out of the lineup for the Brooklyn Nets this season. Uh, a lot of those games, that's the sample sizes that we were looking at, probably include uh, games where like James Harden or Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant weren't in the lineup. But, you know, I have a hard time believing that Blake Griffin's going to get over 10 and a half points with so much usage being devoted to their three big stars. So uh, I'm a little skeptical that Blake Griffin goes over 10 and a half points. I think I'm going to stick to the under here and ride along with my friend's across the various different sports books. All right, so with that one out of the way, let's talk the next guy here who is Damian Lillard at 29 and a half points. Now, I also was going to consider talking Jimmy Butler, Giannis Attentacumpo, um, but, you know, out of those three stars, I decided to go with Damian Lillard here at 29 and a half points. So let's take a look at Damian Lillard's point projection today over on number fire. Now, he's projected at 28.4 points per game. Obviously, that's uh, well over a point uh, under his projection over on prize picks today. So 28.4 indicates that we should be looking to potentially take the under here. But let's take things a step further and do a little bit more research on Dame. Pull up his player card on NBA.com. You can see that for the season, 28.8 points per game. That's less than 29 and a half. Still liking the under after finding that bit of information out. We're going to go look at his last few games here and see how well he's been scoring. If his scoring average is going up or going down versus his season average. Now he's appeared in five of the last five games, over 35 minutes per game. His scoring is up to 31.4 points per game, which puts him a couple points higher than where he's projected today on prize pick. So that's an interesting little fact here. If we were looking to go under, that could be a knock against going under on Damian Lillard tonight. So we're going to click Denver Nuggets. We're going to see how well Lillard has played against Denver this season. Of course, Denver's missing some key components as well. Uh, he's uh, faced the Denver Nuggets three games this season, 34 and a half minutes per game. His scoring average in those matchups, 23 points. So that's a good sign if we are looking to take the under here on Damian Lillard. 23 points is obviously quite a bit uh, under 29.5 points. So basically, guys, if you take the over on Damian Lillard's points, you're expecting him to score at least 30 or more tonight. Can he do it? Of course he can. Uh, will he do it? Well, I don't know. After seeing the previous matchups here against the Denver Nuggets, it leads me to believe that there's a little bit of doubt that he scores 30 or more points. So let's cap things off by looking at his point prop over on the various sports books. We've got two books that we can reference here. Now, the first one has him as a minus 112 under. Now, that isn't strong enough to convince me that, yeah, this is a lock for Damian Lillard to go under 30 points tonight. But the next one is a little bit more favorable if we are looking to take the under here, minus 128 on 29 and a half points. Now, do I feel super comfy, super cozy about taking the under on Damian Lillard on anything? Uh, no, I don't. But, you know, I felt that way the other night against Russell Westbrook, uh, taking the under on his points prop. Um, and it ended up paying off. So sometimes you have to take risks going under on guys like Damian Lillard or Jimmy Butler, uh, you know. Sometimes it could pay off, guys. All right? So that's going to do it for that particular player prop. So the next two props I have for you are assist props. Let's get into them real quick. Like I said, I'm trying to move fast here to get this video done and uploaded so we can take advantage of these plays. Dante DiVincenzo at two and a half assists. You can see the clock is ticking down on me. 55 minutes till tip off. Let's see if I can pull this off here. Dante DiVincenzo at two and a half assists. Let's go take a look at... DiVincenzo over on number fire. 
So we've got him at 2.8 assists, indicating that the over on 2.5 assists is the way to go here. So let's take a look at NBA.com. We'll pull up his player card and see how his assists averages look for the season. Uh, 3.1 assists per game for the season. So that is obviously a good sign for us if we are looking to take the over here on DiVincenzo. Let's move it over to his last five games and run a little report on that one. He's appeared in four out of the last five games, playing almost 29 minutes per game. His assist numbers in that time span, three and a half assists. Another indicator that the over is the way to go on Dante. Now we're going to hit reset on these filters here, change his opponent to just the Miami Heat and see how he's done in those matchups against Miami this season. So he's faced uh, Miami three times this season, played over 25 minutes, almost 26 minutes per game. And in those matchups, 2.3 assists. So pretty close to where he's at on prize picks today, meaning this could go either way here. Two or three assists is kind of the sweet spot for Di Vincenzo. Now, last but not least, we're going to click the assist button. We're going to head over here to Rotowire and type in Di Vincenzo's name. And we've got him on three different sports books here at two and a half assists. We've got a minus 125 on the over, a minus 124 on the over, and last but not least, a minus 125 on the over. So we've got three different sports books that indicate the over on two and a half assists is the way to go. We've got projections that indicate that the over is a good way to go. We've got season averages that indicate that the over is a good way to go. And we got five game averages that say over is the way to go. So I'm probably going to lean toward taking the over on Dante DiVincenzo. Next guy I want to talk about is Trevor Ariza, who's at one and a half assists on prize picks today. He's another guy who is uh, not a major star, but at one and a half assists, uh, it seems very likely that he could go for at least two dimes in this particular matchup. So let's do a search here on Trevor Ariza. He's at 2.1 assists um, projected on number fire today. So 2.1 would be great. That indicates that two or more assists are a uh, possibility here for Mr. Trevor Ariza. Let's do a little search here on NBA.com. Look at his assists for the season. 1.8, obviously more than 1.5. So if you think between one and two assists, more often than not, he's closer to the two assist uh, side of things, which is a good sign for us. So let's click traditional splits. Let's run a little five game filter here. We'll click run it. Now in the last five games, he's appeared in four of those games, playing over 32 minutes per game. His assists during that time, two assists, which is exactly what we want out of him. Two assists or more, and we're making money. So let's reset these filters, change the opponent to just the uh, Milwaukee Bucks here and click run on that. And he's faced Milwaukee just one time this season, played almost 30 minutes in that game. And in that particular game, he had just one assist. So a little bit of a knock on Trevor Ariza, but it's just a one game sample size. It's hard to really put too much faith in just a one game sample size. So take that for what you will. Now, last but not least, we're heading back over here to Rotowire. Let's type in Ariza's name. We've got Ariza up at one and a half assists across the board here, two different sites. This first site here, even at minus 113 on the under and over. This next site, minus 120 on the over, indicating that there is a chance he could go for at least two assists. So uh, I think I'm gonna stick with it. I like the fact that the projections, one of these sports books, and uh, his season averages are all closer to two assists. And this seems like the type of game where he could easily drop two dimes and not um, be scoring so much. I could see him taking on more of a facilitator type of role with the minutes that he does get. So I'm sticking to the over on Trevor Ariza. Now we got a couple of rebound props we need to talk about real quick. So let's do it. James Harden, Brooklyn Nets. Uh, he's had eight and a half rebounds today against Boston. That seems a little bit too high. Not really sure if James Harden's going to run a full complement of minutes tonight or what, but let's take a look at the projections for James Harden real quick. We'll click the rebound column, go back over here to number fire, type in James Harden's name, and they've got him at 8.4 rebounds, which is pretty close to eight and a half rebounds but it is slightly under eight and a half, which means it's leaning more towards being an eight rebound type of game for Harden than it is a nine rebound type of game. So obviously again, Brooklyn fully loaded today. Everybody should be in there playing for Brooklyn. So maybe there's less rebounds to go around for the beard, 
but let's take a look at his averages for the season in his last few games and see if we can pick up any more information on this particular prop. So he's at 7.9 rebounds per game uh, for the season, which puts him under eight and a half boards. That is a good sign if we are looking to take the under here. We're going to move things down to look at his last five games. So let's do that real quick. Quick, quick, quick. That is the theme of today's video. I'm trying to get it done and uploaded so this can help some of you folks out there. Now, he's appeared in two games in the last five. Only played 25 minutes. His rebounds during that time, six boards. So six boards per game in a 25-minute run. So that's actually pretty good uh, in terms of rebound rate in uh, in just 25 minutes. So it's a little bit concerning here. But let's move things uh, away from looking at his season averages and five game averages and look at his averages versus Boston this season. So we'll click run it. Now he's faced the Celtics just one time this season, played over 37 minutes. Not sure who all was healthy or in the lineup for Brooklyn for that one. Like I said, a lot of guys have been in and out of the lineup, KD and Kyrie and so on. Uh, but in that one game against Boston, he did pull in 10 rebounds. So that is a little bit of a knock against taking the under on James Harden's boards today. Uh, so let's move things over to Rotowire. We'll type in Harden's name. Well, it would be helpful if I was in the rebound category. There we go. Now at eight and a half boards across three different books, you can see the action minus 127 on the under, minus 118 on the under, and finally a stronger minus 128 on the uh, under. Now he is getting some juice here on a couple of these books on the over, minus 105 on the over, minus 104 on the over. So this is kind of one of those ones where not feeling super confident or super strong about it. I don't mind if you walk away from this pick or if you fade it. It's all really going to depend on how many minutes James Harden plays today and uh, if you expect him to really crash the boards with everybody back for the Brooklyn Nets. All right, so the next guy I want to talk about is Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. at seven and a half boards. It seems like it's too low for him. Uh, he's looking like a potential over candidate in this particular matchup against Portland. Uh, another thing that kind of contributes to me wanting to take the over is I saw Nikola Jokic is looking like a betting favorite to go under his rebound prop of 11 and a half boards. So let's take a look at MPJ at seven and a half boards today. We'll type in his name here. Uh, we have the rebound column already highlighted. He's at 8.7 projected rebounds. Now that is a strong look at an overplay here. He's almost at nine rebounds projected at just seven and a half boards over on prize pick. So I'm really liking the over so far on Porter Jr. Let's go ahead and do our search here on NBA.com. You can see that for the season, 7.3 rebounds per game, which is pretty close to seven and a half. Not quite where we want him to be, though. We wanted him to be closer to eight, but let's see if that changes when we go and look at his five-game averages versus the season averages. So we'll click run it on that. You can see that he's played in four out of the last five games, averaging just 27 minutes per game. His rebounds during that time, 4.8 boards. Now, I will say that a lot of that is probably attributed to the fact that he's only playing 26.8 minutes so kind of a wonky sample can't really trust that so let's reset that and uh we'll change his opponent to just the portland trailblazers click run it and you can see he's faced portland three times this season played about 28 and a half minutes against portland and his rebound average was six rebounds so his last handful of games and his uh three games against the um Portland Trailblazers, his minutes were under 30. He's going to be playing a lot more minutes, guys. So these sample sizes are ones that mm, I don't know if we can completely trust in this particular case here. So maybe we can learn a little bit more here about Michael Porter Jr. in this rebound prop from the various sports books here. So they got him at seven and a half boards across the the industry today. At seven and a half, oh, I'm sorry, he's at eight and a half on one of these sites. But the two sites that have him at seven and a half boards, he's a minus 125 to go over and a minus 115 to go over. Now, I will point out that he is a minus 103 and a minus 105 to go under seven and a half boards. So some folks are taking the under on Michael Porter Jr. today. Now, he's at eight and a half over here. So at eight and a half, they got him at a big minus 149 under eight and a half boards. So between seven and a half and eight and a half lies eight. 
That's where we need him to be today to pull down eight boards if we're looking to take the over on Michael Porter Jr. All right, so we have reached the home stretch here. We're going to talk two three-point props and wrap this video up and get it uploaded. So the first one I want to talk about is Marcus Morris, who's at two and a half three-point makes today. I'm looking to take the under on Morris. That was my initial hunch, my initial gut reaction when I saw that prop. So let's go back to NBA.com. We'll type in Morris's name. And there's three different Morrises, but we're looking for Marcus Morris Sr. of the Los Angeles Clippers. Now we got to go in a little bit deeper here to pull up those three-point props for Morris and see how well he's been shooting it from beyond the arc. So for the season, he has shot 5.2 three-pointers per game, making exactly two and a half, which happens to be his three-point prop on today's prize picks board. Now that's a good 47.3% percent from three-point range so that's a very good percentage let's change this to the last handful of games here we'll click run it see if those percentages come down a little bit i have a feeling they will now he's appeared in four out of the last five games he's taken 3.5 three-pointers during that time span and he's just down at 1.5 three-point make so that's one less three-point make on average versus his season averages so that is good. 42.9% though. He does make a pretty good amount of the ones that he does take. Doesn't take a lot, but when he does take them, he's making them. So let's click reset here. We're going to change the opponent to the Dallas Mavericks. See what kind of success he's had this season shooting it from beyond the arc against Dallas. Now he squared off against them in two games, played over 33 minutes per game. He attempted seven and a half three-pointers against Dallas on average, making just 1.5. So that is a terrible percentage versus what we saw his season averages and his last few game averages. Uh, that's just a 20% success rate when he attempts those three-pointers. All right, so let's move things over to Rotowire. We'll click the three-point category here. Let's type in Morris's name. And we've got him at two and a half three point makes across the board here, a minus 121 on the under, a minus 118 on the under, and a minus 120 on the under. Now, I tend to agree because the Los Angeles Clippers should be at pretty much full strength. You figure with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George in the lineup, there will be less shots to go around for guys like Marcus Morris in this matchup. So uh, I think based on what I've seen, uh, I am going to stick to the under here on Marcus Morris and hope that he does not make three or more three-pointers in this particular situation. And that brings us to our very last guy of the video. We are uh, running through this video at a record pace here. Eight picks in less than 30 minutes. I love it, and I'm sure you do too. But let's talk Jason Tatum, who's at three and a half three-point makes today. That seems a bit high. I am looking to take the under on Tatum. So we're going to do what we just did for Morris but apply it to Jason Tatum. Let's type his name in and open up his player card. We gotta click the stats. We gotta go into traditional splits. And once that loads, you can see that for the season, 64 game sample size, 7.6 three-pointers attempted, and he makes about 2.9 per game. So even if we round this up and we call it three three-point makes per game, that is still going to be less than three and a half. We need him to make just three or less three-pointers in this situation. Uh, so let's move this from a season average to his last five games and click run it. You can see that in his last five games, he's appeared in four of those games, playing about 35 minutes per game. Now, during that time span, 7.8 three-point shots attempted he's making three per game good for a 38.7 percent three-point field goal percentage but again those three three-point makes are still less than 3.5 so yeah it's like 0.1 higher than his season average but it's still not higher uh, than three and a half which leads me to still want to lean toward the under here let's reset these filters though we're going to change his opponent to just the brooklyn nets and see how well he shot from beyond the arc versus them this season He's appeared in three games against Brooklyn, 37 minutes per game. Now in those games, 8.3 three-pointers attempted. So that number is on the rise. Also on the rise is the fact that he is making 3.7 of his 8.3 attempts. Good for 44%. 3.7 still hovering around that three and a half range, meaning that this could definitely be one of those coin flip type of situations where he could go for three or four. Uh, if he catches fire, then yeah, he's going to go for four or more three-pointers. But uh, you know, 
with Brooklyn being fully healthy here, hopefully somebody's trying to clamp Jason Tatum down. They don't have to worry about Jalen Brown as much. It's just Kimball Walker, Evan Fournier, maybe a little bit of Marcus Smart sprinkled in there. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stick to the under, I think, so far here on Jason Tatum in this three-point prop. Now, last but not least, we're going to take a look at Rotowire and see how they are uh, betting the over or the under here. So we type in Tatum's name. We've got him at three and a half across the industry today. Minus 139 on the under. That is a good first start. Minus 130 on the under. And last but not least, minus 128 on the under. So all three of the books that we like to reference, they all have him going under three and a half, three point makes. For the season, for his last handful of games, he has been under three and a half, three point makes as well. Something just happened here. What'd they do? Add more players to the board or something? Anyway. The under is looking like the way that I want to go here on Jason Tatum. Let's hope the Brooklyn Nets put the clamps on him or they just blow the Boston Celtics out. Maybe Tatum sees the bench a little bit early in this particular one. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Let's try and to con continue the success that we've had in the previous videos. Four or five hits per video. It seems to be kind of where I've been averaging. Maybe we can come up with five or more in today's video. Uh, if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. Turn on notifications. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up for me. This is CJ. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.